Welcome to the episode 4 of the Warom build. This is my first video of the year, so I just wanted to say happy 2020. Okay, I just wanted an ex excuse to show this picture, but whatever, we're moving on. Today, firstly, I will show the Big 3 Tech SKR box unboxing, and then we will start working on the heat pad. For the heat pad, some of the footage is old, as old as November, I think. And again, some of that is before I got the drill bench thing, so some of the holes are angled and whatnot, and I, that got fixed over time, etc. I didn't show the footage before because, well, if, like it would be like, okay, I drilled a hole for this episode. Next episode, I did some sanding. You know, it it was very slow, so I decided to hold on to the footage until I made some decent progress, and now that. The work on the heat pad is pretty much done, I decided to show it finally. Uh, I also ordered my printed forward parts, the 3D printed ABS parts basically, the functional ones at least, not the cosmetic ones. I'm going with a dark grey and black build. It is already shipped by now so it should arrive pretty soon. And on the screen what you're seeing right now is basically a third of the parts shipped, the actual grey parts that you're seeing. And yeah, that's the third of the functional parts, basically, and uh, there's as much as that, there's equal amount of uh, cosmetic parts as well. And yeah, they're not included with printed forward, so we'll print them later, I guess. But yeah, I'm just saying that so you get an idea of the amount of plastic you need for a build like this. And yeah, hopefully it, it will arrive soon, it's already shipped by now, so it should arrive by next episode, but we will see. And lastly, before I start the video, I w just wanted to update you on the extrusion situation. I decided to order genuine Misumi ones from Fermilabs in Germany. It does cost a fortune, but uh, I didn't want to take another risk again because the last one ended up horribly and ended up wasting a ton of time and some money so hopefully they will be good it should arrive by next episode is my guess but yeah it's not even shipped yet so we will see and yeah hopefully it will arrive because without them i can't really do much in the next episode so yeah, until the extrusions arrive, I'll probably won't be able to upload the episode 5, so yeah, hopefully it will arrive by then. And yeah, I started rambling, so yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say, so without any further delay, let's start the video by doing the Big 3 Tech SKR, view, uh, SKR unboxing. My order from Big 3 Tech has arrived, and as you can see, we have four boxes here. I'll just unbox two boxes because well, obviously they are the same. So yeah, let's start with this. Here we have the KMC 2209s. Yeah, looks like they put a card in it as well. And here they are, four of those per box, and it comes with these uh, blue heat sinks. I'm not going with the blue build so I'm gonna replace these I have some black ones on hand not enough so I'll order, order more but you know for the purpose of this video it will do I'll replace the blue ones with these black ones but yeah other than that we also have a jumper style cable I don't think we will need these with the SKR 1.3 board if I recall correctly I'll double check but as far as I remember, they worked out of the box. And here was the SKR. Looks like they put a little duck in there. Yeah. It's the card. A USB B cable. I may need 90 degree versions of this, but yeah, we'll see when we get to building the forum. And here is the SKR board itself. And here is the SKR board. Here are we where we will plug in the TMC2209 drivers. 
and as you can see there are two extra uh, slots in there and that's uh, that how it connects to the SKR board so we don't need those jumper cables here are the screw terminals for the wires they're cheap variety so yeah I I will try to use these but yeah I may just solder the cables as well we will see the USB connector is here and we also have a SD card here uh, micro SD I guess I don't think we will need this but yeah I don't know I'll check the documentation I'm sure that probably holds the firmware never mind yeah, we will probably need it anyways here is the 32 bit processor on this thing obviously not as powerful as the duets processor but it's good enough for the job especially considering that these are basically slave boards and the duet wife not the duet wife sorry the raspberry pi is doing the actual controlling using the clipper firmware and yeah i'm the raspberry pi that i'm planning on using is a raspberry pi 4 but it's not ready yet i'll show you that when it is I've cleaned the surface of the aluminium to the best of my abilities using uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, acetone it didn't do a great job but I, I think that's the best it's gonna get so now I've marked two of the four holes that I need to drill for the to mount the heat pad to the frame so now I'm about to drill those this one I actually marked with a uh, center hole punch. These things are very useful if you don't have this, any of those. It basically creates this notch so your drill bit doesn't drift. So if you don't have one of those, they are like cheap Chinese versions of those are fine. Just get one of those, they're like a couple dollars. So I'm about to punch this one as well. Basically bring it to point and do that a couple of times and as you can see that now also has a mark so without further delay I'll drill these and then I'll also try some sanding as well on these sharp edges okay I now drilled those two holes and as you can see it's actually like a two stage thing it's basically to allow you to have this below the surface, the head of the screw, but obviously it shouldn't pass, and as you can see, uh, it works. I use slightly larger drill bits than the recommended ones because I didn't have those, but yeah, it's good enough, and it should do the trick. I sand it down all four sides. This took much more effort and time that I and that than I anticipated, but. It is done. As you can see, this is the end result. This is one of the bad sides where I started to run out of sandpaper. And yeah, this is I think one of the better ones, but overall I think it looks pretty decent now. I drilled the holes on this wrong. I it the the piece of paper, the drawing wasn't clear enough online and so I thought the 75 that they mentioned was from the side in reality it was from the center so instead of 75 millimeters from center this ended up being 100 millimeters from center so these holes are wrong I will have to redraw these fortunately this is not a big deal because it will be covered by the energetic PEI spring, spring steel heat bed. It's just a long name, I couldn't pronounce it properly, sorry. But yeah, hopefully you got what I meant. I drilled the correct holes for the aluminium plate, if you remember. I drilled the holes initially in the wrong places. Well, now here they are, drilled in the correct places. And don't worry about, you know, having two screw holes etc they're not going to be visible at all i'll cover them with the magnetic sheet that we will use for the energetic pi coated spring steel 
whatever it is called, sorry, <laughs> it has a long name. And we can't do everything because I don't have the heater pad right now, but at least I have the magnetic base and the spring steel plate as well. And if you don't know basically the way this works is this side has a powder coated PEI and well, this side is it, it's just a PEI film and I'll experiment with those to see which one works better. This is by Energetic on AliExpress. There, are, there is also an American company doing this as well, subtle design, probably some others as well. But yeah, based on my budget, this seems to be the best option. Energetic is more expensive than the other Chinese brands, but seems to be better quality, at least based on what I've read. So yeah, what we have to do is to apply this uh, magnet base, which basically looks like a fridge magnet. To the heat pad but uh, also i need to figure out a way of punching holes on that magnet for the screw holes probably the best way is to use a drill with the same bit but yeah i'm not really sure i'll, I'll look into that but before we even consider doing that we should clean this plate as you can see it's pretty dirty I've been working on cleaning this for about 20 minutes now and yeah as much as it still looks dirty I think this is as clean as it's gonna get I don't have anything better to clean this with I've tried soaked water this time as well to get the uh, more like, dusty stuff then went with isopropyl alcohol then acetone then isopropyl alcohol again and yeah this is the result we have I think it's pretty clean at this point. It's just that these are probably scuff marks, not anything dirty. And there is a little bit here, I'll get that as well. But yeah, anyway, I'll get that in between. And I'll now apply the magnetic base to this. I applied the magnet and I'll get to that. But while doing so, I noticed that this isn't the usual 486 MP. 3M stuff that you see when I saw the 3M logo that's what I just assumed it was the good thermal uh, tape but it's not and it I don't know anything about this specific tape but it just says double coated tissue tape so yeah it doesn't say anything about thermal performance so yeah the tape may be bad is what I'm getting at but yeah we will see for now it is working it's stuck down nicely and it's holding the spring steel bed well as well. I'll actually demonst demonstrate the purpose of a spring steel when I get to printing it, but basically it just lets you snap off the printed parts without letting it cool down. And yeah, I've also drilled the four holes that we need to for the screw holes, the devil screws basically. Now I do need to drill the fifth hole on the aluminium plate, but yeah, I don't see a point of doing that yet. My order from Kino has arrived, and actually a whole bunch of other stuff have arrived as well, like the stepper motors. But now that I have this, we can now finish working on the heat pad. We need to apply the heater. This is a 300 by 300 millimeter, 220 volt, 750 watt heater. Because, well, in my country it's 220 volts. It will be controlled by an SSR, solid state relay, but I haven't ordered that yet. They also ship this with it, whatever this is, just like the dock, the big 3 tech ships. And here we have the manual. I actually haven't looked at it yet, but I'm sure there's some special way of applying this. Actually, there's nothing really unique. I just have to apply it. So, yeah, I thought there was something, but never mind. So, yeah, we'll apply this. Then, also, drill and tap one hole on the heat pad for the thermal fuse. Do the wiring between this and the thermal fuse. And, yeah, the heat pad will pretty much be ready at that point. 
I cleaned the surface with isopropyl alcohol and then applied the Kinova heater pad. I also drilled, actually it was already drilled because it was one of the wrong holes, but I threaded one of the holes with the N5 tap and using an 8mm screw. The manual says 10, but it was better suited in this case. Uh, I mounted the fuse here. The orientation here may look random to you, but that's intentional. It just allows me to route the wire like this. But if I made, made it go parallel like this, it could theoretically, the wires could get jammed in the between the nuts and yeah, it could be a electrical shock risk. So I wanted to avoid that. But yeah, other than that, the bed is now ready. So as you can see, the heat bed is now ready and we can finally mount it. But for that, obviously, we still need the extrusions and the plastic parts, which haven't arrived yet. And without them, I can't do anything more. So this is all I can do for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching. And I'm going with a dark clay and clay, dark gray and blue. I am going with a dark gray and a black.